Now, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, says she plans to increase the maximum penalties for disrupting a motorway. Speaking at the Conservative Party conference earlier, the Home Secretary criticised Insulate Britain protesters and said she now plans to criminalise interference with key infrastructure, including roads, but also railways. She also said she'll give police and courts new powers to deal with offenders. So what difference could it make? With me is Alid Luckman, who's a Conservative councillor in Worcestershire. He's also chair of the West Mercia Police and Crime Panel. And also with us, Cameron Ford, who is an activist with Insulate Britain. Uh, welcome to you both. It's good to have you with us this afternoon on BBC News. Um, Cameron, maybe I can start with you, because I wonder what you've heard of what the uh, Home Secretary said this afternoon and what you will do differently, if anything, as a result of these tight new laws. Yes, I believe you were just saying she's going to criminalise interference with key infrastructure. So that would effectively be criminalising themselves because the way that things are going, if they don't reduce their CO2 emissions, we're going to see roads literally washed away from flooding. So it's great she's getting these laws in for herself right away. Um, I want to come on to some of that in just a moment and the purpose of Insulate Britain protests. Um, but let me bring in Alid at this point, too, because Alid, you know, it's quite clear, Cameron there telling us that there are bigger issues at stake. But first of all, let's talk about the change in the law and what difference it would make. What do you make of what the Home Secretary said? Well, I think it's completely proportional. I think uh, it's an important step in giving the police the tools in their arsenal to deal with those eco warriors. Um, and I think it's it, it's not just to protect the public who want to just get on with their daily lives, uh, get to work or, 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 you know, as we saw yesterday, visit their loved one in hospital. But it's also actually to protect the protesters from this emergence of vigilantes who are now taking the law into their own hands and, and ripping these protesters off the road. I, I don't believe in that. I think the appropriate step is for the police to do that. And I think these, these new rules will give them the powers to do so. Um, Cameron, I promise we will come on to talk about some of the reasons behind the protests in just a moment. But I want to talk, first of all, directly about what the, uh, the Home Secretary announced this afternoon, those tighter rules. Um, you heard there from Alid calling you a vigilante, saying that the laws are proportional. Do you agree? I think our response to the government's own declaration of a climate emergency nearly two years ago, this is proportionate to an emergency. What we're not seeing is a proportionate response from the government on an emergency. You think of back to the Blitz and you would see on every street people digging Anderson shelters. You might see a bit of external wall insulation now and again going on, but we're just not seeing anything like a proportionate response to what Sir David King, who is their own chief scientific uh, advisor, uh, retired now, and is saying we have three to four years to drastically change things because the future of humanity, you know, is, is at stake here. And the purpose of your protest is to do exactly that. It's to raise uh, the awareness of the climate change concerns and the issues that you have in how that is being handled by government. But your, the measures that you are using and the tactics that you are deploying to make that protest are what has come in for criticism. Is it fair to block a motorway, however much you believe in your cause, to disrupt people going about their everyday lives and their everyday business? Yes, I think in uh, a couple of decades time, people will be even more frustrated that their everyday lives are ending, quite frankly. Right now, we have short term temporary disruption to stop a long term permanent catastrophe. Uh, I think we need to zoom out and, and look ahead of what's coming down the road and see this little inconvenience that we're causing as really quite necessary to get the government to meet its own CO2 reduction targets, which it's not meeting. Chatham House uh, behind the IPCC have said that we're 95% likely to miss the target. I just wonder how Councillor Luckman feels about his Conservative Party going to miss the target. Well, let's ask him. Alid, let me bring you in at this point. Um, look, you're 21. Climate change will affect all of us uh, over our lives. Um, is Cameron's tactic not the way to raise the profile of something that will hugely significantly affect our day to day lives? No, no, I don't believe so. I think um, I think the message is getting lost in the anger and frustration that it's causing to everyday working people who are just trying to get on uh, with their with their lives post pandemic. 
Um, it's disrupting businesses who, who need to deliver goods. Uh, it's disrupting our emergency services. Um, and I think I think there's plenty of other ways to get the message across. You know, here at Conservative Party conference, we've got protesters here who are going about it in the right way. They're not trying to disrupt it. They're just getting their message across clearly. But you know, we saw yesterday with when someone tried to hit Ian Duncan Smith um, with with a traffic cone that overstepped the mark and they were arrested. It's exactly the same principle here. When you overstep the mark, we need to use the law um, to bring you to justice. Cameron, is can that ask, true? Are you alienating you, the people from your sorry, cause? Can I ask if any of those protesters who are outside the conference party have had a, a space on the BBC News today? Are they being interviewed like myself? I mean, we're missing the point, really. Unfortunately, we have to cause this disruption because it gives us a platform. You as, as BBC News and all other journalists uh, and media news outlets, it's your responsibility to talk about the, the missing of the CO2 target. If you, you know, if we think we're missing the message, it's the news's responsibility to, to overlook the, the minor inconvenience that we're causing right now and talk about, you know, the absolute apocalypse that's coming our way. Yeah, Cameron, you're right. I mean, there's a lot to talk about here and there are many different issues. The reason that we're talking today is because we're looking at the tactics you've deployed to raise the profile of that cause. And, and I want to put it to you again. Alid says, look, you're alienating people. You are losing your message by these disruptive actions. So you think people will act less on the climate crisis because of what we've done? No, I just wonder whether there are better ways of getting your message across. Yes, I mean, we've been trying that for 30 years and that's and we're in this situation, you know, like we've been doing this. We keep saying we've been trying, you know, it, it, it doesn't work. So you have to take direct action. I'm sorry, but the government, by ignoring us, ignoring our demand that we sent two months ago, I mean, we just didn't get a reply to it. So we've tried through their means and they ignore you. And I, as a 31 year old, am pretty pissed off about my future that's been handed to me, quite frankly. Um, Alid, um, when we talk about the government response, um, I know you're a Conservative councillor, so I wonder whether the government, in your view, is doing enough to, to tackle some of these huge issues that are facing us and to deal with some of the concerns that protesters and activists like Cameron have. Well, I think the government have committed to ambitious plans that they will absolutely meet. They're, they're fully committed to meeting them. And I'm seeing on a local level in, you know, in, in, in my division and in my county council area, we've declared a climate emergency. And that ensures that the support and funding is there to, to commit to ambitious targets and to get on with delivering them. And I have every confidence that the government will do that. Um, it's good to talk to both. This conversation... an emergency is different. You can declare it. It was declared two years ago. Stop declaring it and start acting on it. And that is a... Well, you've, got, uh, you've, got, you've got to declare it to be able to actually get the support and get the funding there. So that's the first step. And in, in by declaring it, we've now committed to our plans and we're, we're getting on with delivering them. Well, we've got three to four years. Your, your UK chief scientific advisor says, so get on with the job. And at that point, we will draw a line under it. We could talk all day, but I'm really grateful to you both. Thank you, uh, Cameron and to Ali. Thanks for um, arguing your, your respective points uh, this afternoon with us here on BBC News. Thanks very much, Cameron and Ali there.